Hey girls and gals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today is a very special vlog because it is the weekend of Halloween, which means it's time for the weekend ween readathon. I definitely have a very ambitious stack. I'm gonna hold it up right now, but be warned, um, I'm definitely not going to read all of these, but I am a mood reader. So I have a lot of potentials when it comes to what I'm going to read and I'm just going to kind of mood read and kind of figure out what spooky books that I wanna read. I'm also halfway through No One Gets Out Alive, by Adam Neville and I am probably not going to count that towards any of the challenges because I am halfway through it but I do want to finish that one and hopefully watch the movie before the end of this readathon and the end of Halloween season slash October whatever you want to call it so definitely I'm going to do the prompt um, coin toss first and um, we'll just we'll see we'll see where my reading goes from there I'm very excited for this readathon I've got a lot of really good horror sci-fi spooky and speculative sort of stories so yeah I'm just gonna go toss a coin pick out a book get to reading and kick off the Halloween weekend right so here are all of the books well some of all of the books that are potentials for this weekend I think though for the coin toss I'm going to go between these two witch books because I'll probably only want to read one so coin toss sounds good for this. So I think I'll do that. This is The Witch in the Well. I think it's more of a traditional horror sort of story. This one's a historical fiction um, that might also have some speculative elements. I'm not sure if there's actual witchcraft or if it's just like the witch trials, but those are the two options for the coin toss and we'll do heads and tails. And I have a coin, so. And that is tails. Trying to get it to focus. Okay, yeah, that's tails because heads is just normal heads and then it's one of those state quarters, so tails. So we're going with Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch by Rivka Galchen. Very gorgeous cover. I'm excited to dive into it. So this will be my first read of the readathon. A very dark rainy and stormy Saturday which honestly perfect weekend ween Halloween weekend weather me and my partner are staying in pretty much all day today and we're watching a couple horror movies and then going to see a horror movie at 10 p.m. tonight um, we're watching pray for the devil I think that's what it's called the new exorcist kind of movie I'm not religious but I, I really do love demonic possession movies I just I, I really like them um, but yeah so we're watching horror movies I'm reading a lot he's gaming some so very chilled laid-back Saturday also entertaining was the book that I finished this morning everyone knows your mother is a witch by Rivka Galchen and this was such a pleasant surprise to me because I really picked this up on a whim saw it at the library didn't really haven't really heard anything about it um, but the title and the cover really drew me so I really enjoyed this it was for my first prompt flip a coin and this was the one the coin landed on 
on landed on tails so this takes place in 1618 germany and this is written in a very interesting way in a way that i really enjoy as a storytelling technique so we are following our main character katarina she is a widow and she is being accused by several members in her community of witchcraft she is put on trial and that is what this book is following so it's several different points of view so we get letters from her son that is writing to different heads of state heads of church to try and save her we're also getting her own account that her neighbor sits down and writes down for her because Katerina can't write herself and then we also get trial transcripts so different interviews that the judge did with different members of the community and what they were accusing Katerina of I keep saying it's Katerina I think it's Katerina um, or Kathchen uh, it was used a lot of different names throughout this but I think it's Katerina so this was apparently based on real events based on real transcripts that the author found of the son writing about his mother. This is definitely not a horror, it's historical fiction, but it is like kind of horrific, like the things that Katharina kind of has to go through and for all of a sudden to be just reviled by a community that she has felt a part of for so long. So I will say, if you enjoyed Dolores Claiborne, Stay With Me by Stephen King, like that sort of writing style and that sort of heroine where it's an older woman who's very prickly, kind of unlikable, kind of likable, but just a just a character. Um, so if you liked that following that kind of main character with the interview format that feels like very natural, this doesn't feel like it was written to be in that format, if that makes sense. It just feels very natural, like it was just transcripts of people being interviewed. And then if you also liked books like Slewfoot by Brom or The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson without the fantasy horror and just the historical fiction parts, I think you'd really like this. Um, I've not seen it around a lot. I think it came out last year, but I really enjoyed it. I had a good time reading. It is pretty short. It didn't take me too long to complete. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed the storytelling of this. And yeah, if you're looking for a historical witchy book, definitely enjoyed. I then moved on to a book that was for the prompt, read a book with Monster on the cover. And I did pick up Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. I'm not finished with this one. I'm about 70% of the way through this one though. And I don't think I'm going to like it as much as my last book. Um, just because I'm having some issues with the tone. And when I say that, the big thing that I'm thinking of is this very much starts out very funny, like almost kind of like a rom-com with paranormal elements as we follow our main character Rory and she gets bitten by a werewolf. She's recently moved back to her small town to help her sister out as her sister gets ready to have a baby. And so she gets bitten, has to kind of try and figure out that, figure out the new changes going through her body as her sister is also experiencing changes with her body and she's kind of falling for um, one of her best friends from high school who has also moved back to their small town. So it starts off very lighthearted, very rom-com comedic, um, and then it abruptly takes a shift um, into something darker with like really heavy subject matter as well, um, but still trying to like keep that lightheartedness about it, um, which I think for real life, unfortunately, like that's what we kind of have to do. Like even if bad things happen to us, we have to try and keep living our lives and try and maintain some semblance of normalcy. But for this, it's just a little weird because trigger warning, big trigger warning for this, which I didn't even see discussed. I looked through the dust jacket um, and there's like a lot that is a big focus of this book that isn't mentioned in the blurbs. So um, our main character Rory, trigger warning, she was sexually assaulted by her stepfather. Well, not really stepfather, but her mother's long-term live-in boyfriend when she was a child. So she's going through the trauma of that um, and a lot of that is coming back up as she's having this new body trauma of being a werewolf and then also just being back in her hometown. So that is like a lot. So we're dealing with that and it almost feels like two different stories in a way where I would have enjoyed maybe reading like a darker sort of story about that trauma, tying it into this new werewolf trauma and exploring the different um, traumas 
on your body like both of those that happened to her and then I think there's another story there um, where it would have been like that cute rom-com with a werewolf kind of making more hijinks but the blend of it together is just not really working for me so I've got about 80 more pages left of this one um, and we'll see if like my opinion changes at all but I'm hoping to finish this off start another book um, but yeah so far I'm not really really vibing with this one um, but I already had a book that I really enjoyed in this readathon, so it's okay. Um, I'll finish this. Obviously, that also kind of speaks to this. It's definitely not so bad that I'm like DNFing this book, and I think it's really well written. Um, just, just the tones and like the different stories being told is just a little. Um, it's not. It's just not really what I was looking for in this story. But yeah, I'm gonna go get to reading. Maybe pick out another horror movie to watch, and I will talk to you all later. So as you can see, it's been very dark, very overcast all day. So I think I'm going to stretch the prompt a little bit for read a book in the dark. I'm going to read Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman, and I will read it um, just by whatever light the outdoors gives me and not turn on a lamp or anything um, and just read by like candlelight because this was one of my most anticipated releases of the Halloween season um, and I haven't gotten a chance to pick it up yet so I really want to pick this up next so this is this is my next book. It is now Sunday. Happy Halloween Eve. I am currently in the middle of three different books. So far in the readathon, I've completed two separate challenges. Let a coin toss decide my first read and then read a book with a monster on the cover. And I've done those. So currently I have two challenges in the works. One is listen to a spooky audiobook or read a horror manga. And that one I'm currently listening to Mother Thing. This is one where I saw the cover heard the premise and was hooked. I just, this cover is so cool to me. It's a horror comedy, also kind of like a satire. Honestly, if you usually like the sad girl type of books that I see kind of circulating on TikTok, if you like bizarre, dark literary fiction, I think you'll really love this. It's following this woman who her and her husband move into her mother-in-law's house to take care of her um, because she's going through a really rough time. Her mother-in-law ends up 
up killing herself um, at the very beginning of this story um, and ends up haunting the couple. Um, and it's it's very bizarre. Um, being in the mindset of our main character, she's, she's a bit of a weirdo herself. So very interesting to listen to on audiobook. The cover, the vibes of the cover, like the camp, the quirk, the 50s weirdness, you're gonna get that in here. So that's my audiobook. It's fairly short. I looked, I'm on chapter eight, which is about 70 pages in, but it's only 278 or so pages. So I should be able to finish this either today or tomorrow, which is the end of the readathon. The other challenge is read a book in the dark or at night. And for that one, I did mention earlier, um, I think I mentioned yesterday that I'm going to be reading Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman. And I've read from this author before. I've enjoyed his horror work before. This this one is about a woman whose best friend slash ex-boyfriend from college um, also starts with a death. Um, I feel like maybe that's kind of typical for horror. They are inseparable, but he has issues with drug addiction. He is addicted to lots of different drugs, um, and so they've had a strained relationship. She finally cuts him loose. Um, it's a really toxic relationship for her to be a part of, so she cuts him out of her life, and he ends up dying of overdose. Um, before he died, he left her messages saying he could see the dead. Um, and there's something to do with a drug that may or may not let you see the dead when you take it. So she trying to kind of hold a seance with some people to get in contact with him because she is feeling very guilty about the fact that he called her the night he died and she didn't pick up. So she holds a seance, takes one of these pills, and may or may not be able to see ghosts. Now, the weather here has been so beautiful this weekend for me at least for my plans of watching horror movies and reading books. It's been cold. It smells like fall outside. It's been raining. It's been quite dark most of the weekend as well. Very overcast. So I've been reading this one in the dark and I've been kind of just reading by candlelight or by window light where it's like very cloudy, overcast, and dusk without having any other lights on. So I've been enjoying that. I will be continuing this one later on this evening because it's actually, this is the brightest it's been all weekend. I'm using natural light. So I'll be reading this one a little bit later. And then unofficially, I haven't been counting this one for any of the challenges because I did start it before the readathon, but I would like to finish it so I can watch the movie potentially tomorrow for Halloween. And that would be No One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville, the same author who wrote The Ritual. I feel like that was a pretty popular Netflix movie a couple years ago. This has also been adapted into a Netflix movie and I'd like to watch it. This one's almost 600 pages. It has the Bible thin pages. Um, so deceptively thick. I'm on page 321, so I'm hoping to also finish this one. This is the thickest book that I'm attempting to read all weekend. So um, also because I'm not counting it towards a challenge, this is like back burner for me. I'm probably going to finish the other two first, but worth mentioning, I am still reading this one. Um, the Ritual, I liked the movie better than the book by a lot actually. I thought it was a story that was told well. I mean, I didn't have too, too many issues with the book. Um, I did think the pacing was a little weird and some of the choices made were strange, but I just felt like it was a story that was better for the screen than a book. This one, I am very, very curious to see how they're going to do it as a movie. So um, maybe, maybe we'll get a little comparison by the end of this vlog if I manage to finish it. But those are the three books that I am currently reading at the moment. Last night, me and my partner went to go see Pray for the Devil. It was okay. Um, we have like the AMC A-list pass. So if you don't have something like that, I would just wait until it comes out on streaming um, rather than going to see it in theaters because it was fun. Um, but it's it was really like any other exorcism movie. It felt very nostalgic to me. It felt like a movie that would have come out in the 2010s. Um, so it was a good time. It wasn't a great time, but it was a fun time. We also watched The Grudge this morning. The Ring is one of my favorite horror movies and they came out around the same time. There's this big horror push in the American market to redo Japanese horror movies. Um, seen The Ring, love The Ring, um, and I've never seen The Grudge, so we actually watched that um, this afternoon. I definitely like The Ring better, um, but I'm glad that I've seen it because I feel like The Grudge is kind of an iconic supernatural horror franchise and we're gonna try and watch another movie later on tonight so yeah I'm going to go get to reading just it's just been a really fun weekend I'm really just having so much fun just kind of wrapping myself up in all of these really spooky horror tales so I'm really enjoying that going to get back to that and I will give you all an update later
it is now at the end of the weekend ween readathon. It's actually November right now. This whole week has kind of been a whirlwind with me just reading a lot of spooky books for this readathon. It was Halloween, it was my partner's birthday, and then it was also the start of NaNoWriMo. So yes, I've just been very busy, but I'm ready to do just a little bit of a final wrap up. I did manage to finish three books during the readathon and I'm in the middle of two more. Um, so pretty solid weekend of reading. I was not the biggest fan of Such Sharp Teeth. Um, I can't remember if I talked about it when I had finally finished it or not, but I felt like this had two very good, very different concepts together that would have been better as separate books. So the tone just didn't really work for me here, um, but I did have a pretty good time. I mean, I finished it. I've really been trying to get better at DNFing books that I really, really don't like. So I did, it was okay, um, just not exactly what I was expecting. The first book that I read this readathon, everyone knows Your Mother is a Witch. I really loved this. I would say this would be a perfect one for audiobook. I didn't really get a chance to listen to it on audiobook, but I just, I feel like the way this is formatted, it would be a great audiobook. This one, definitely more historical fiction than horror or anything like that. It's more of a normal women being persecuted for just being a little outside of the grain, outside of the norm in world history rather than people with magical powers. But I really enjoyed this one pretty short read but I was just absolutely like enthralled this was just surprisingly good and really awesome that I had never heard of it um, wasn't even anticipating it and picked it up and found a book that I really liked and then next up we have mother thing and this book I loved I loved it. It was absolutely bonkers. Um, I would recommend the audiobook. I did listen to this on audiobook um, just because to fulfill a prompt, even though I did get the physical book from the library as well. Um, this, I don't want to say a lot about it because I feel like it's very much like if you like horror comedies, sort of like Bunny. Um, if you just like horror books that are funny too, absurdly funny, like bizarre, um, and have your mouth hanging open by the end of it. Um, our main character's absolutely wacky. Um, I just go into this knowing as little as possible. Um, know that it's about familial relations when this woman and her husband move into her mother-in-law's house and her mother-in-law kills herself um, and is haunting them. It's, it's bizarre. I loved it. I'm going to be thinking about this one for a very long time. I would go into it knowing as little as possible because it takes a turn and it's just absolutely wild. So I loved this one. Now moving on to the books that I'm in the middle of, kind of funny that I didn't finish either one because initially I was very excited to read a good haunted house or ghost type book during the readathon and then I ended up like not really reading, well Mother Thing is paranormal but um, not in like a traditional way so it's funny that I didn't finish either of the very ghostly books but um, no one gets out alive this one I feel like a broken record but I would say this one also just kind of go in knowing very little just know that a woman who is kind of down on her luck moves into a room um, that is very very cheap and things start happening that are paranormal. Um, yeah, this is, it's very thick, it's very wild, it takes wild directions, but um, it is a haunted house story, and it's a haunted house story where the protagonist, you understand why she can't leave, because she's really living paycheck to paycheck, um, so to move would be to be living on the streets, so definitely I like that in this one, how there are reasons why she can't leave, and why she has no one to like turn to for help, so really interested in this one. Um, I'm very very intrigued to see how it's going to end and then the second book that I'm not as far into um, but I think I'm really going to love is Ghost Eaters by Clay McLeod Chapman and this one I haven't even really gotten to the utmost spooky things it's just mostly setting up the story which I believe I already gave a synopsis for earlier but I'm really enjoying it it's very atmospheric it already even though it's just setting up the story um, and there haven't been like ghosts yet. 
um, the atmosphere and the descriptions and the creepy unsettling sort of atmosphere is already so present and I'm very excited to keep reading this one. But that is it. Those are all the books that I read during Halloween weekend. I really really enjoyed mostly everything I read. Had a lot of fun dedicating a whole weekend to spooky stories and spooky books. If you enjoyed this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel for more content from me. Stay safe, stay spooky, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!